So now we need to create the to-do list component. So if I go into my components folder and create a new folder called to-dos or to-do list and same structure again, index.js. And we also want to create a styles folder, styles file, should I say? Sorry, styles.js and then RFCE, this will be called to-do list. And in the to-do list, I'm going to have some bullet points. So I'm going to create a UL. Um, I'm going to call this one list container, capital L container. And within here, I'm going to render out all of my to-dos in, in bullet points. So render all to-dos in bullet points underneath. So now if I create the UL, so import styled from style components export const the list container which is equal to styled dot ul which is unordered list and this ul is going to have a padding of zero and a cursor pointer cursor pointer and that's all we're going to have for this and then I'm going to create a row. So export const of row, which is equal to styled.li. So the bullet points within. And in this li, we're going to give it a display of flex, align the items centrally. And we are going to justify content as space between because we are going to have the delete icon on the far right and then the text on the left so we just want to space them out e equally we're going to have a padding of top and bottom for each li of eight pixels and then zero on the left and the right and then the font size will be one rem so one rem like so and that's the row complete we are also going to have a text field so export const so this is where the li will render the text so export const of text which is equal to styled dot span so the text here essentially what i want to do with the span is i want to capitalize the first letter because it might not be capitalized so this is a handy trick so text transform capitalize so essentially we the first letter of the span will be capitalized so i think that should be okay and now we need to render out the row and the text so if i go onto my to-do list in here i also want to get access to my to-dos i want to map over them so in my to-do file in the component i have access to the to do's so now i want to render the to do list and pass down the to do's which are equal to to do as props so i have essentially fetched the data set it fetch the data here and then set the to do's to response.data so the to do's i am now passing down as props into the to-do list which i will now have access to um, so if i console log the to-dos in here so to-dos and then i'm just going to put a comment of hi and i am also going to comment or i'm going to delete the to-do here because we don't need access to the to-dos array there now so now i'm going getting access to the to-dos once again in the to-do list component so all i now need to do is map it onto the page so if i scroll right enter enter again so i have the to do's and we want to ensure they're there so first off i could do optional chaining like this dot map which basically means if to do's is there then we want to map the data across so for each to do so for each to do we have we want to implicitly return so implicitly is like so where we don't need to define the return so we don't need to type in return and then like so 
we can just implicitly return everything. And if, so for each to do, we now want to render a row. So what we defined in the styles.js file. And within this row, I'm going to give it a key first of all. So the key for the to do will be to do dot underscore ID because that is what is on the what is returned from the API as you can see here a unique element that we want to identify per row so each object within the array will have an underscore ID property on there so we also need to import the row from the styles so now we have that we also want to render the text so if we also import that from the styles like so and in the text we are going to have item sorry to do dot text like so and now if i save we now have the text rendering on the page if i was to add a second to do so second to do this will also add on to the page like so so I also want a close icon. So all I'm going to do is render another text tag here and inside is going to be a capital X. So if I now save, we now have the close icon also. So there are two things I want to do now is I want to create an update to do so that when we click on this text element, then we will update the to do on the API. And then when we click this one, we closer to do so to differentiate it i'm just going to name this one close icon or delete icon and then all i'm going to do in this styles file is export const of delete icon which is equal to styles and then all we want to do is just copy the text so you can do it this way like so and now if i save it's essentially the same styling. So now that is complete, I'm going to create the update to do method and the delete to do method. So we'll just do them in the same file. So first off, I'm going to create the update to do, which is equal to async. And this time we will need to take a parameter in the parameter that we pass in. When we click on the text, we want to have an on click method. So the onclick method will return an anonymous function calling the update to do that we have passed in. And we are going to pass in the to do dot underscore ID. So essentially what we are doing is we are passing in the ID that we want to update. And in here, the argument or the parameter passed in will be the ID. So all we need to do now same thing again try catch block within here so catch the error which we will console log in this case now i will do console.error which is equal to error.message like so and then i also need to import the instance from axios so import axios from the file that we created axios this one so that within the try block we want to create a response which is equal to await axios dot put and this will take two arguments the first argument will be the endpoint so that will be slash to do's slash the id that is passed in so we are using template literals here to pass in the slash to do slash ID, which is this ID will be now passed to the request.params on the URL. The second argument will be the payload. And what we essentially are going to pass in is the ID because the backend handles everything for us. So now that we have our response, all I want to do now is return response or data or json and what i'm also going to do is because we are updating the to do we need to refetch the data again so i will get access to 
the fetch data function from the parent component of so fetch data here. We will fetch the data again. So fetch data is now getting passed in as a prop, like so. You could do it in other ways. You could have a state management tool like Redux and then update the state that way. But for to keep it simple, I'm just going to pass it in as a prop. So now if I save everything across and save all, and now have the update to do function. And now if I click on, this is my first to do and click on it, this should now, this is my first to do and the completed has changed to true instead of false. So all we need to do now is mirror this on the screen visually. So I'm going to pass in a prop to the text component. So what I will do is open this up a little bit and then enter, and make this look a bit neater. Okay, so the prop I'm going to pass in is called is completed is equal to the completed key here. So we're going to map through the to do's for each to do. If it is completed, it's going to be to do dot completed. So, so if the to do is equal to true, so if completed is equal to true, then we want to style it in a different way. So the shorthand method for this is we could just take this out because to do dot completed is now true anyway. If we wanted to check if is completed is false, then we could do is completed is false. So because we're passing to do dot completed is only going to pass the is completed prop down to the styled component when it is only true. So if I now go into my styles on my text, I'm going to add a color and here we are going to access the props being passed in. So props and props dot is completed. If the props dot is completed is true, we want the color to be red. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything. So no, like so. Now, if I save, so now the one that is true has turned to red. We also want the text to, to be underlined. So what I'm going to do is just copy this across and paste in the text de text decoration to be lined through if the is completed is true also. So now if I save, we now have the, if it is completed, we now have that crossed out. So now that the update function is working correctly, the last CRUD method to do is the delete. So it's essentially the same function. So if we copy this and paste it underneath, the update needs to change to delete. And again, we are using the first, the same endpoint. We are using the slash to do slash ID. Instead of dot port, this will be delete. We are passing in the ID, same the same as the update method. We are again fetching the data and then returning the new response. So all I need to do is just copy the on click here and pass it into the delete icon. We are passing in the ID, but all we need to do now is change the function to the delete function like so. And on my delete icon, I also want to add a cursor pointer onto this. So we know it's a clickable element. Now, if I save, so we have the update click working and the delete click working. So if we test out the delete click, so inspect and refresh the page, we should have all the functionality working. So on my network, tab first functionality is getting the data so the second one will be creating the data this is my third post and now if i press enter it adds it onto the list here with the payload so we are posting the data 201 response created with this is my third post text which is correct and then we are refetching the data once again. If I was to click on this is my third post, we now 
pass in the payload of the ID, which then update the completed to true. And then the last one is if I delete, this is my first to do and click, we delete. So we delete the method and then we refetch the data also. So on the back end, so if I go into my slash to do's API, I should only see this is my third post and the second to do on here. So if I refresh, we have an array of two objects, one which is true. So complete, it should have a line through it on this is my third post, which it does. And then on the second to do, this is not completed. So it doesn't have a line through which is mirrored on the back end also. So now that we have the functionality working correctly and the page rendering the relevant to do's on there, all we need to do now is create a key component and a author component. So 